We got the two leaf springs disconnected from the frame of our Jeep. Then the axle just lowered onto these two stands. And then from there, we moved the axle to a creeper. And we have it, so we have a two by 10 and a two by six, just going this direction or across the creeper. And we just lowered the axle onto the creeper. And that is our dolly. And that's her safe way of moving the front axle out from underneath the Jeep. And then we'll get the front axle onto our work stand so we can work on restoring the front axle. Yeah, looks like we can start tearing it apart. Look at the knuckles. And there we have it. We have the axle on to two horses and now we can take apart the knuckles, get the brake drums off, try see what's happening in here. The first step here is we gotta take off our lockers. So we gotta take off all these bolts, just using a piece of angle iron here between the two wheel studs so we can get this unloosened. Once you spin off all the bolts, you should find uh, some shims. One tip here, make sure you label each side so it goes back together easier. Using the front axle socket here, it's a special socket you can buy, it's pretty big. We're just taking out our axle nuts and there's one nut right here. There's a washer behind there, another nut, another washer. Just gonna take this off. There's the first nut. Then comes your special washer. It's just lightly in there, but then and it just needs to be slid out. There you have it, there's the one washer. And then use your axle socket again. We'll take out the next nut. Use the second nut, and now it's one more washer back in there. I have to use a screwdriver to get it out. There we go. There's your second washer. So you have two big washers and two big nuts. And now the whole drum should just pull right off. And there you have it. The drum just pulled off. And as you can see, there's a bearing in there too. That just <laughs> dropped on the floor. So be careful not to happen to you, but it's in there. Now we have to make sure we disconnect our brake line. So we'll take out this pin and we'll loosen our little S brake line so it'll all come off in one piece. So we're just pounding the uh, brake line pin out right now. Just pound it with a screwdriver. That just comes right out. Voila. And now we will loosen this right here. And now we got the brake line disconnected. Now we're using a breaker bar and taking off the brake backing plate for the front here. We six of them. We'll have to loosen all of them. And the whole backing plate should come right off with the whole brake assembly. Now just pull off your backing plate with the whole brake assembly. As easy as that. Watch, we get a bearing that might fall out too. There you go. And the whole assembly came out just like that. So what we're doing now is just taking uh, the nuts off the king pin before we can get any further. And there's four of them. Interesting that uh, uh, the stud actually came out so rather than the nut coming off the top. So anyways, nevertheless, they're off and uh, that's all good in that regard. And there's four of them that hold on your brake line guard that holds your brake line on and then it'll just come right off now. Off it comes and there are shims in there and you want to keep track of those because you want to put the same amount of shims as you had a few shims on top of the knuckle. So we'll just keep track of them. So now we're just going to do the same to the bottom kingpin, and there's again four bolts, nine sixteenths, 
So uh, we'll take these off. Stud fell out again on the bottom one here. One of them did, and the other one, the nut came out. Doesn't matter at this point. A little block washer. Can't forget those when we get back to putting this all back together. And here comes the bottom kingpin with its shims. And we'll keep track of those. Similar two shims on the bottom as we had two shims on the top. So we're just going to take off this fill plug here, out the side of the knuckle. We want to save that because sometimes the old stuff is better than the new stuff. So we'll save that for the other new knuckle. So it looks in good, pretty good shape. And as so we're going to save our king pins for our new knuckle when it gets rebuilt. So what we're going to do now is uh, take off this knuckle seal plate off the back of the knuckle. And there's a whole bunch of nuts there that or bolts that are threaded into the knuckle. So we'll just go around the last nut here. And that should do it for that. Now we'll just take off the plate and behind there is a seal. I believe it's felt. Uh, sure is. Uh, so we're going to replace these seals because they are well used. I don't know if they've seen the daylight for 75 years. Kind of rusty as well. And that's the felt and the seals seal or the plate for the felt. Now I believe we should just slide this knuckle off and there is the knuckle in its glory. There's a bearing in there that we'll deal with when we get the new one. It doesn't look like this thing has seen grease for many, many kilometers. Pulling off the seal from the axle. So there we go. Now we pulled the drain plug on our differential in the front axle so we can drain out all the oil. So now we can actually pull out our axle directly out of the driver's side. This part right here, we'll just pull right out. So we're just gonna pull out the uh axle here. Check some of those. And there it is. Looks in good shape in my opinion. And now we can look inside and see if this bushing is worn out. It's a good time to make sure you check because you can't really get to it otherwise. Using a spotlight we can look at our bushing here and we can see our bushing is not worn out. It doesn't have to be replaced and our axle is in pristine condition as well. So this is a good sign. So we have to just kind of get the seals redone and get the bearings repacked. And now we'll move the other side. This other side's exact same step as the driver's side. Just take it all apart. And then we'll kind of assess what it looks like when we get this apart. In the end, we managed to get the passenger axle apart. We got the knuckle apart, all the bearings out and stuff. And when we pulled out the axle, we actually discovered we have a Bendix axle on this side. And on this side we already took out, you saw we have a Spicer style axle. So our plan is to make them both Spicer axles, as Spicers have a better turn radius. And now our driver's side and the passenger side will have the same turn radius on both sides. So it will help in extreme four-wheel driving. And that is how we get your axle apart. And next we'll get the knuckles rebuilt and the axles reinstalled into the axle housing. Thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe.